Recently, I held a poll asking how the people felt about the Straw Hat situation here on Egghead and whether or not we'd be able to beat Saint Saturn. Over 9,000 people voted on these polls and the results were overwhelming. So across three platforms, 20% of people believe that the Straw Hats will beat Saint Saturn here, while 80% believe that we will not defeat him and if we do, we will require some assistance. Since the majority vote believes that we'll need some help, today we're here to talk about who could potentially help us. Last week, I brought the idea that Kizaru could be the person to save us from this situation, but today we're here to talk about Dragon. I feel like it's really obvious as to why Dragon would appear here on Egghead. Not only is one of his old friends Vegapunk in danger, but his son is also in trouble as well. I know some people think that Dragon doesn't care about Luffy, but that is far from true. Dragon seemingly went out of his way to save him in Logtown from Smoker, and from Ivankov's flashback, we also learned that Dragon instinctually looks in Luffy's direction, while also possibly thinking about him. While yes, Dragon has been notoriously absent from Luffy's adventure thus far, this time, things could change. This time, it's different. This time, it's in the newspaper. I know that sounds a little bit silly, but we really shouldn't underestimate the power of Big News Morgans and his influence on key characters. Back in 1074, Morgan said that his words can shake the world and that his idea for the next day's paper had the heading of Emperor Straw Hat Luffy takes Vegapunk hostage. Skip over to 1089, and we can actually see that this news is quite literally shaking the world. Partially because of what happened at Lelucia, but Lelucia never existed. What's usually appreciated from the newspaper reaction panels is that we get to see characters that we haven't seen in quite some time. This time around, we saw Dadan, Makino, Iceberg, Laboon, and even Momonosuke. Another character that made an appearance that chapter was Ivankov over at Kamabaka Queendom. But what's interesting about seeing Ivankov though is that we don't see Dragon or Sabu with him when they were last seen alongside each other. Yes, Oda could have just off-paneled them, but they are the main players of the Revolutionary Army who were just talking about Lelucia. Why not show them reacting to the fallout of Lelucia or even the news about Luffy? My guess is that it is because they are no longer on the island with Ivankov. They're actually heading to Egghead Island. You might have noticed that alongside Dragon, I also slipped Sabo into this rescue mission, and that's for a couple of reasons. At the end of Dressrosa, Sabo said that if Luffy were ever in trouble, he would drop everything at a moment's notice to help his younger brother because he doesn't want another ace situation. Funny enough, but if you saw the volume 107 cover, then you might have noticed that Luffy's running pose looks a bit familiar. If you go back exactly 50 volumes to volume 57, which marks the start of Marine Ford, you might notice that Luffy's running pose is the exact same as 107. Of course, this is a really nuanced point and it is a little bit of a stretch because Luffy runs the same way every single chapter, but for the sake of this video and the potential Marine Ford parallel, I'm gonna say that Oda did this intentionally. At Marine Ford, Luffy had to fight his grandpa Garp and rescue his brother Ace, which didn't turn out so well. But what if this time it's different? What if we flip this all around? Instead of Luffy having to fight his grandpa Garp, what if it's Luffy fighting alongside his father Dragon? And instead of Luffy coming to save Ace, what if it is Sabo coming to save Luffy? We could potentially have Dragon versus Saturn and Sabo versus Luchi. And the reason I say Sabo versus Luchi is because Oda actually already did that back in One Piece film Gold. So who's to say he doesn't do a callback and bring that fight into the canon manga? Another weird coincidence that just so happens to tie these characters to Egghead Island would be volume cover 60, where we get the ASL flashback. On the cover, we have all three previously mentioned characters, Luffy, Dragon, and Sabo present. And what's interesting about this volume cover is that Luffy is wearing a shirt that says Tamago Jiken, which, when translated to English, means egg incident. People equate the shirt as foreshadowing to Sabo's early fakeout death, but what if instead it was foreshadowing that Sabo and Dragon would be involved in the Egghead Island incident? 
Sabo already lost Ace. He doesn't want to lose Luffy. So how would he feel once he learns in the newspaper that Luffy has just stormed Egghead Island and is now being assaulted by 30,000 Marines without his fleet behind him? Currently, and even if we did read in the newspaper that the Straw Hat Grand Fleet was coming to save Luffy, I don't think that would matter to Sabo. Because when Luffy read the newspaper about how Ace was getting executed and that Whitebeard was waging a war against the world government, Luffy went anyways. Sabo wanting to save Luffy would also be killing two birds with one stone. Sabo would get to save his brother, and Dragon not only gets to save his son, but also his old friend Vegapunk, which would also solve a question not a lot of people are asking. And that question is, where would Vegapunk go after Egghead Island? Would he join the Straw Hat crew or the Grand Fleet? Or would we just leave him at Elbaf, the next island? Instead of either of those answers, why not have Vegapunk just join the Revolutionary Army? During the Vegapunk Ohara flashback, we saw firsthand that Dragon wants Vegapunk to join forces with him. So I'm willing to take a bet that that offer is still standing. And plus, if Vegapunk did end up joining the Revolutionary Army, he might finally be able to take them out of the steampunk era of technology and into the future, perhaps. The main pushback I see with Dragon showing up here is that it's too quick. Kamabaka Queendom is located in Paradise, not the New World. How would they make it here in the span of one day? Well, Dragon is a special character. A lot of people, myself included, believe that Dragon has some sort of wind-related devil fruit. Whether it's a Paramecia, a Logia, a mythical Zoan, take your pick. But at the end of the day, Dragon always is shown with the wind by his side. His powers would be perfect for traversing the world of One Piece. Just simply shoot wind at the ship's sail, and that ship will be moving faster than ever. To back this up, his ship is even named Named the Wind Granma. This also wouldn't be the first time a character has traveled insane distances in the span of a single day, because going back to Marineford, Chapter 580, we hear that Shanks was last spotted fighting Kaido just yesterday, but mysteriously and quickly, he managed to make it to Marineford just in time, which in pre time skip was the amazing feat of traveling from the New World all the way to paradise in just 24 hours. I believe Dragon is capable of that feat as well. I believe that Dragon will be the perfect fit here on Egghead Island, especially now that we're getting the God's Valley flashback. I might sound like a lunatic when I say this, but I believe that Dragon will make an appearance at God's Valley 38 years ago. Thinking back to the revolutionary's mindset, Dragon's whole goal of invading Marijuana wasn't just to declare war against the world government and destroy their food supplies, but it was also to force the God Knights to finally make their move. I think the reason why Dragon knows about the God Knights and is wary of them is because he has witnessed their power firsthand at God's Valley. Dragon was there and witnessed the cruelty and strength of the Celestial Dragons, which is what put him on his path to becoming the world's worst criminal the leader of the revolutionaries. Funny enough, at the time of God's Valley, Dragon would also be 17 years old, which is the same age Luffy was when he started his journey to become King of the Pirates. God's Valley is also the perfect time for Dragon to meet his revolutionary companions, Ivankov and Kuma, who are also on this island currently. Why would Dragon be here at God's Valley 38 years ago, you might ask? Probably because of Garp. Garp throughout Luffy's childhood has been trying to get his grandson to become a Marine, so there's a good chance he also did the same for his son Dragon, which could be another reason why Garp doesn't like talking about God's Valley. Not only did he have to protect Celestial Dragons and ally with Roger, but that could have been the day his son's mindset of the world changed. The day his son started his revolutionary journey. In chapter 1095, we saw six chests in the background of God's Valley that may be containing devil fruits. In a way, this whole culling tournament against Celestials is reminiscent of the Colosseum in Dressrosa where Doflamingo coveted the Mera Mera no Mi as the ultimate prize. A prize that Sabo the Revolutionary ended up taking. We don't know for sure if Dragon even has a devil fruit, but if he did, this would be the perfect place for him to obtain it, because it would be the perfect mirror to Sabo's acquisition 
of the flame fruit. The last reason why I think Dragon could tie in perfectly with this arc is because of Saint Saturn's presence on both Egghead Island and God's Valley. If Dragon indeed shows up here on Egghead, then we could get some interesting callbacks and dialogue between the two of them. This could even potentially give Luffy and company the advantage over Saturn since both Dragon and Sabo have met the Ox Spider Demon Gorosei member before and lived to tell the tale. Dragon is coming. And hey, that's all I got for today, guys. This is just one of many possibilities I've been playing with, and I'd love to hear what your opinions are about this. Is it plausible, or do you think it's still too soon for Dragon to show up in a meaningful way? I would love to hear what you guys have to think down below. And yeah, my name is Sai, and I'm signing out. Peace.